the stream should start at some point. It has. There we go. That was quick. Have I done a stream since I upgraded my internet? When did you upgrade your internet? Mm, some while ago. I don't remember. It was before I went to the US, but it wasn't long before I went to the US. It's been three weeks. Yes. But I've got 45 MB up now, so I wonder if that makes a difference. Howdy, folks. <coughs> Welcome to Dan pontificating about whether his internet's better or not. And we might accidentally do some painting. I have no idea what I was working on before I left. Like, literally none. No memory of it whatsoever. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I don't remember either. <laughs> must, have, must have been riveting. <laughs> no, it was, it was just so long ago and I've got the memory of a goldfish sometimes. Yeah. Call me a name, it starts with D. I don't recall what it is. Um, right. Well, well, we'll just forget that because it was in the past. And we'll just move on. So, today's shenanigans are going to involve getting these guys to the secret source stage. Um, I remember. It was the uh, the human priest on his palanquin. Oh, was it? Yeah. Did you just go and look up the episodes? <sighs> yes. <laughs> so, remember is more. I researched. Well, to be fair, I was, you know, a little bit busy also. Otherwise, that morning, you were, I you, didn't you hang were. around. No. <laughs> uh, do you have the same problem today? I don't think so. Right. I thought I would be, but I don't think that I am. Okay. So, here we are. The priest on the palanquin. And his bowl of alpha giddy. Very shiny. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I'm having a little bit of trouble with those that the matte spray in this weather. Yeah, me too. It comes out very glossy. Yeah, it's hilariously humid at the moment. And by that I mean 98. It's rained all night. Ooh. The only saving grace is I think it's 10 degrees, so... <laughs> I don't think I'd call that a saving grace. I'd call that, you know, next worst thing to snow. <laughs> Just noted that I put a typo in the stream title for this morning, just because. Why not? Um, and when these guys are secret sourced and in the dehydrator, we'll do some detail work on these because I undercoated and prepped these last night. Why crimson skies? People ask. Why? 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 Well because I finally got payment for the work that I've been doing for the last 12 months. Uh, and you took it in the form of bits of metal. No, I took it in the form of one box. One box. A box most precious. Well, most precious to me. <clears throat> so we'll have to have a look at this at the lo on the long view, I think. Shiny light. Here we go. Hey, Todd. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> 
Well, there you go. So it's unpunched. Um, and the other part of the reward is inside, which is this. It will note that it is in its original packaging. <laughs> uh, you're watching Twitch at the end of a long week. I'm attempting <laughs> to live a meaningful content at the end of a long week. Uh, I don't know which one of us is worse off. Um, yeah, it's it's unpunched, unmolested, but it does have a bunch of Xeroxed record sheets in it, additional to the published book. But here's the manoeuvre template. I wonder what game we adapted that for. Da -da. And the damage template. You can see that it's it's never had any use whatsoever. So, um, I'm not saying it's the only unmolested copy left in the world. I'm sure there are some sitting on shelves somewhere, but it's certainly the only one we found. Um, Unpunched goodness. Mm. It's even got its original D10. Plus all the little plastic clips. So yeah, everybody's going big deal. Who cares? Well, you care. I I care very I very care much. That you care. <laughs> So, I'll tell the story um, of how that came to be found, particularly. That, this patch, while it's, you know, singularly uninteresting, I imagine, to, to most people in the world, that represents the final piece in a complete Renegade Legion collection. <laughs> Ooh. So that is absolutely everything that was published for Renegade Legion. I now have at least one copy of. So, there, there was some winning. I could think of maybe only one other person in the entire world who could lay claim to that. Yeah. And it was probably the guy you got the patch from. <laughs> Now, see, I have something that Ross doesn't. And this is going to annoy him when he listens to this. But I have, and I'll only bring one of them out because I only need to show one of them. <laughs> I have a complete set of six painted and assembled grav chariots for Circus Imperium. <laughs> uh, what's that I hear? Is that Demon World 4th being cancelled? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's been released. It's too late. <laughs> oh, no, that's the end of Dan being cancelled. <laughs> oh, no. So, I'm sure there are other guys in the world that have got complete Renegade Legion collections. I'm pretty sure there, there are a number. But up to this point, I didn't. So that was a... It was a milestone, and I have been collecting it since it was current, so, you know. When did yeah, fair know? enough. When was it defunct? 95. 95, it went defunct. Oh, it was licensed to Crunchy Frog. Wow, it's busy in Twitch chat today. Yeah. 
not just Todd. We have uh, old Teague as well. <laughs> well that's Ross. So <laughs> well, that's Ross. <laughs> He's listening. Hi, Ross. <laughs> Uh, hence the joke about the deadline being moved up. <laughs> you know, Ross, you can have a set of six of those Circus Imperium chariots if you want them. We'll just have to organise getting the castings from Iron Wind. Righto. Goggles on. I have, I have no doubt that you have the miniatures. No doubt whatsoever. I don't believe that they're assembled and painted, though. So, Matty. Mm hmm Say 1879. 1879. There you go. I don't know anybody that does it better than you. I love that intro. Really? Because I hate it. Oh, I love <clears throat> it. 1879. Only you've got a far more impressive voice. So. I do try, but... Mm. It's one of the things Joe says about me. <laughs> <laughs> that you're trying. That I'm trying. <laughs> I'm not sure she means that kindly. <laughs> she means everything kindly. Like, kindly leave. <laughs> Seriously, though, there is a tiny little bit of distortion at the start of the uh, spoken part of those intros, and I hear it every time, and it bugs me, and I've never gone back to fix it, and I right. never will. Right. Well. It's yeah. just something in there deliberately to set my nerves on edge <laughs> every time I hear it, because I hear it about six times listening for yeah. screw-ups. <laughs> Uh, the well-practiced art of self-torture from the creative type. Yeah. But hey, we've got episodes coming out to the end of September, so... Oh, no way! Yeah. Damn, I will have to catch up. That's all right. We've been, um, yeah, I don't mind people falling off, particularly when we're not releasing every week like we used to. No, oh, it's not that. I'm just badly distracted. Well, I know how that goes, too. But, you know, especially seeing as I'm painting 1879 figures again. Well, whereabouts did you get up to? Do you remember? Uh, they were just about to set off back to the cave to deal with the. Oh, okay. Then I won't. Uh, yeah. I won't say any further then. No, no spoilers. Just a disclaimer to say that no dinosaurs were actually drugged. In the making of those episodes. 
No, but pigs were fed. Hmm. Thanks, James. Have I missed something? Um, our mutual friend James Sutton provided some sound effects from his pigs. Oh, did he? For those episodes. Right. Excellent. Must reach out and see how he is. Haven't heard from him in a little while. He's doing social media stuff all of his own. Yes. He's he updates every day. Oh, there you go. Every day. Yeah. yeah that's key. And he's very, well, he, he's very insightful in what he says, I yeah. think. He did say he was doing that stuff. Hmm. You haven't told me I'm out of shot yet. Um, that's because you're technically not. <laughs> you could shift a little bit to the right, though. Hmm. Yeah, like that. Where you're at, I guess, in this delay time. It's hard to tell, you know. <laughs> You've got... 17 centimetres of desk space to work with. Yeah, I know. I did, <laughs> I did have a rectangle drawn on here, which was the the camera view, so that I knew whether I was in or not. But it's been erased through subsequent cleanings, mm. and I keep smacking the camera, so it keeps moving. Well, I can see two potentials for improvement there, then. Mm -hmm. Never clean. <laughs> and don't eat the camera? Yeah. Uh, not eating not the cameras. That's never going to happen, because there, this is a crowded airspace. I have two overhead lamps and a, a halo made out of lights from Bunnings, and so reaching to the back of the desk means smacking stuff. If only I was less clumsy. Or less constrained for space. Or less constrained for space. I was debating buying another printer the other day. Oh, to, yeah. to print A3. Because I've only got an A4 printer. But um, I gave up on the idea. Because I just don't have anywhere to put it. What did you be printing A3 for? Um, well, I want to print Demon World maps out because I want oh, to okay. start running the um, the real time campaign just to just to flesh out the kingdoms a little bit more to understand what they've got from the perspective of armed forces and where their forces are allocated and that sort of stuff just to build a picture. So, yeah, cool. Um, at the end of the day, I just decided that stitching together A4 is only twice as hard as stitching together A3. So I'll just do that. That way I don't have to buy any additional hardware. I'll just have to buy ink. And sticky tape. Oh, I'm going to use um, glue sticks. Mm. So glue, glue them down to like backing sheets. Sticky tape's too hard. Actually, glue sticks might be too hard too. Um, there will be some experimentation. Let's put it that way. There's a reason they give glue sticks to kids. Yeah. So they can eat them. <laughs> That's all they're good for. It's food. It's a food group. <laughs> Educational nutrition. Well, 
Well, I think you can get gelatin out of horse hooves. Yeah. Did, did, ooh. <laughs> 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 it's not what you would call a uh, pleasant process. No, especially, for especially not from the horse. <laughs> Saturday morning. Uh, 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 good one, Todd. What do you say? Keeps them out of the hands of the Marines. The glue sticks or the horses? 4K Nolos Dos, I guess. Uh, I don't know what that means. Oh, it's... Uh, Spanish for why not both? Oh, right. Which is one of my standard joke responses to any question. <laughs> an an awe based question? Yeah. It, it's the kind of question Joe comes in and she says, Now, do you want muffins or do you want cake? And I'm like, Or. What's this or thing? That's awful. Yes. Porque no los dos. Why not have both? Hmm. Yeah, I didn't pick up on the dos. dos. Oh, my Spanish is terrible. Hmm. The only Spanish I'm sort of aware of is Dos Deos Mi Amigos, which is an album titled by Populate Itself. Fair enough. Which is basically translated as Two Fingers, my friends. Two Fingers Up Where? Well... <laughs> It's the, it's the English <laughs> salute to the Spanish, presumably. Oh. Uh, see, I was, go I was going in an entirely different direction with a reference to another podcast I'm sure that you don't listen to. Right. Because you'd be out there if you listened to it. I'd be out where? Um, out somewhere with two fingers crammed up your... Right. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Hollywood comedians. Oh. So... I should tell the story, I suppose. Yeah, if you want to tell your story before I start gushing over how good these miniatures are. Oh, no. Gush away. These are beautiful. They are. Every, every strongly miniature. considering next order. Well, one of the things that we need to do is we need to fix the fact that some of the codes are missing. Yes, especially in the same sort of range. Mm -hmm. Well, there are significant bits missing out of the British one too. Um, I presume the postie didn't come. No. no. The postie came on Thursday and brought nothing but bills. Right. That is so annoying. Uh, it'll probably turn up Monday. Hopefully. Mm, hopefully. With the... Uh, packet of stuff from Leadbear. Oh, right. That's how I know it takes eight days from South Australia. I, because um, it's been over a week on that. I, I, I contacted him the other day and ordered some stuff, and I haven't heard anything, so I pinged him again this morning going, uh, did you get that order? He's had COVID. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, I reached out to him in July, and it took him... Two and a half weeks. 
Right. He's catching up. He's he had COVID. He's catching up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's cool. I just wanted to ensure that, like, because I he sent me the catalogue and I replied to the email saying thanks and then continued on with the order and depending on how he's got his mail client set up he might have seen the thanks and just ignored the rest of it so it's just checking he got it there's no hurry on it yeah well, lots of other stuff you can paint in the meantime uh, well <laughs> it, it's actually it, it the the tufts are actually for these guys because I've just oh, opened, okay. opened my last packet of six millimeter dry grass. So. I ordered another twelve packets of various tufty thingies. Oh, that'll take them a little while to put together as well. Possibly. So. I just want to ensure that. He's got the order. I don't care how long it takes, just that he didn't miss it. You know. Oh, the dogs are at each other again. Okay, so he sent me an email, not on Friday, but the Friday before, saying, your things are in the mail. Right. Um, yep. Blah, blah, blah. Th thanks for your patience. Post postage is gratis. I uh, replied to him 30 minutes later saying, you know what, I'm going to pay for the postage anyway because you're a good guy and you don't have to do that. I place the order knowing that you're ill, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and it took him about six days to respond to that email. So yeah, right. okay. he, he's either crook or busy or... Well, possibly both. Well, likely both. Likely both. And he's not a young guy, so... No, and he has been crook, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice guy, though. Yep. Very nice guy. I'm glad and, you introduced me to him. And a great product. Oh, fantastic. Seriously. Best tufts I've used. Mm-hmm. And I've bought a couple of different brands now. Yep. And cheap. I don't know how he does it, aside from as a... A hobby. Well, it is a hobby. I think he's retired. Yeah. Couldn't be making money on it. Well, certainly not much. Not when you take into account how much flocking costs. That's what I mean. Static grass. Like, I, I ordered another batch out of Macterials in the UK, and they're reasonable prices <laughs> right up until the point you have to pay for postage. Mm. I've only ever had one lead bear tuft fail on me. Really? And it was a failure of me. Right. I put it down and I decided I didn't like the placement and it ripped up a oh, big <laughs> chunk of base. <laughs> a big chunk of base. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Been there, done that. Like That's how good they are. They actually hold. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't come off once they're on. Yeah. So that's our pl uh, plug for... the yeah. bears tufts. Yeah. Absolutely. Me word good today on two cups of coffee. <laughs> So you had a story you were going to tell. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is where where should I start? I think. Well, where where yeah. I started, where, where, this is goes long, long, long way back to. Um, now I'm going to get into trouble because I can't remember the name of it. Uh, The, the FASA online convention that runs every year. Fredonia Con. Fredonia Con. Yeah, see, I'm going to get into trouble for that. 
Uh, I Iros. Know, Iros. Um, so the first Fredonia con that I attended, Ross was doing an unboxing. He had, he'd picked a number of boxes up out of his stacks and was unboxing them on camera, just going through them to see what was in them. Like, I remember that. Hmm. So, over the course of time, we'd been discussing um, rewards for, for various things, and you know, I'd been insistent about getting a copy of Crimson Skies, just because I'm that guy. Um, and he said, there's likely a copy here, we'll just need to go through boxes to find it. So, I... I uh, and and they graciously agreed to host me for a few days before we went over to Gen Con. So I got in very late on the Friday night, um, which was hilarious because I left Friday afternoon, which when you consider the length of travel um, is just time zone weirdness. But anyhow... Um, we had a number of things to do, one of which is I needed to get the demo armies into shape. And I had a look at them and decided that we needed to rebase them. Well, if only for the rules, if anything else. Yeah, and the bases were rudimentary, shall we say. Um, Todd uses harsher language than that about them, but, you know, I think they were what they were at the time and... You, you just need to sort of learn from that and move on. But anyhow, like, uh, I'd mailed Ross a big packet of bases a couple of months ago, so they were already there waiting. Um, Handy. And he um, kindly gone and got the tub of spec filler that I asked for. <laughs> so that was already there. Um, the only thing we didn't have was... Uh, paint and texture and things like that. So we took a trip down to the hobby store on the Saturday and grabbed some supplies. And then I spent the remainder of Saturday and Sunday morning um, rebasing, basically. And um, then I think it was lunchtime on the Sunday... We wandered off down to the workshop, and it's a it's a really well populated woodworking shop. There's all kinds of really cool tools all over the place, um, and it's well used because he um, just finished putting some doors in because after we left, there was a, a wedding going on while we were away in Gen Con, and there were people coming to stay, and so some doors were put in to add some privacy. Hmm. Um, which he made from scratch, I believe. Anyhow, pretty impressive door. So obviously it's a it's a fully functional workshop, and next to the workshop is the storage area. Um, one other thing to note about the workshop is that it has a number of pictures hanging on the walls because they don't fit in the house, <laughs> and they're originals. So, if you've ever seen the uh, box lid of the original Renegade Legion Interceptor, that original artwork is hanging on the wall in that workshop. Ooh. Which is pretty cool. Um, there's also some original Battletech stuff. But, uh, I'll get to a little bit more of that in a minute. So... The racks are, oh, I don't know, three metres high, I suppose. They're, they're your typical warehouse racking type situation. Yep. And three tiers and full of boxes. Um, but the boxes have no labels on them, so we don't really know what's in them. Yeah. So, ostensibly, we're box diving for this copy of Crimson Skies, but pretty sure we're looking for other stuff along the way just because um, 
Uh, turns out box number four had pretty much what we were looking for in it, insofar as that it was the copy of Crimson Skies that I now have here. But um, we decided to keep going. Um, picked out some uh, Earth Dawn miniatures and some some Battle Tech stuff, and you know, labelling boxes along the way so that Ross has some kind of a clue what's there next time he goes looking for stuff. Fair enough. But um, we unearthed. Now, uh, are you familiar with the thirty twenty six tech readout? Thirty twenty six. Uh, yeah, I can't that's... say I can list every mech in it, but well, yeah. the, you wouldn't be able to list any mechs that are in it because there aren't any. It's the vehicles and. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know it's got a whole bunch of tanks and a whole bunch of planes and, and that kind of stuff in it. It 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 also has color plates. So in the middle of it, there's some color renderings of tanks and things. Um, all the illustrations were done by Dwayne Luce. We found the originals. Mm. All in very good condition. So those were whisked away up <laughs> to the house to be a little bit better protected. But um, you know, just it just a magical moment to be holding and looking at, you know, the the stuff that, that Dwayne had worked on directly. It was just for me, it was it was a magical moment. But again, I could see how other people would just be sort of rolling eyes. But anyhow, um, those things would be worth real money to the right people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I reckon so. so um, but the... The funniest part of the story, again, <laughs> Ross might be a little bit unhappy about this, but anyhow, it was the last box. Um, we'd sort of cleaned out uh, two full, three full sections, I think, three or yeah, three. Um, gotten rid of a whole bunch of rubbish and things that, you know, a whole lot of empty files and stuff like that. That's... Um, when I grabbed the last box, which was up on the, the third rack, I could tell immediately that it was damp. Mm. And so we'd already uncovered a live mouse and a number of mice nests in boxes prior. But this one was damp on the outside. Now, that was a warning sign. So we opened it up, and sure enough, there was a really extensive... Um, mouse nest inside and it was foul everything in the box was just well foul is the only way to to describe it really um, I think it's a literal description yeah the box was fouled yeah absolutely um, that's a twitch safe word of way to say that particular set of words mm -hmm. <laughs> it was fouled yeah so we start digging through it because there's <laughs> stuff in there digging through it yeah well oh, pulling God. pulling stuff out and digging through it and and you know we'd uncovered earlier a a prize um which was for a battletech tournament which was you know was sort of a a, a plaque and it had a um a plinth on it, and there was an atlas stuck on it. So it was mm -hmm. a, you know, a, a trophy for a tournament, basically. Anyhow, we start pulling out tissue paper wrapped miniatures. And, you know, here's an atlas in tissue paper, and the tissue paper was awful, you know. So it's like, strip the tissue paper off. Oh, right, okay, there's an atlas in there. Put it down in a pile. Reach for the next one. Oh, it's an atlas. 
put it down in a pile. Which for the next one. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. The running joke was that we were uncovering um, a, a Steiner Scout company. Well, at the end of it, I think there were 32 atlases in that box. And because of the nature of the way that the the rodents had behaved, chewing their way through everything, like every all of the structural integrity of everything that was inside the box was gone. And so these miniatures had all ended up in the bottom in a really sort of <laughs> ugly pile of uh, mouse leavings. Anyhow. <laughs> But we also we also uncovered um, some other stuff. There were some other miniatures in there as well, not just that. But um, the the funny part to me was is that <laughs> there, was an, there was an entire regiment of atlases <laughs> in the box. So much humour was made at the expense of the Steiner house honestly i don't know what else you can do with steiners <laughs> they have some very silly ideas oh, well you know a scout regiment containing nothing but atlases is not beyond the no it's not these are the people who invented the charger after all <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the trip, the whole Gen Con trip experience and everything like that. But um, the highlight of it was actually that afternoon spent wandering through 40 years of faster history. I can totally get that. Yeah, I was, totally understand that feeling. It's an absolutely magic moment for me. Especially putting dirty thumbprints on Dwayne Lewis originals. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> the, the joke was, so how did you end up maimed? Well, I put a dirty thumbprint on a Dwayne Lewis original. Someone found out about it. Um, no, they're all in very good condition. So if you want to collect such things and you're willing to pay ludicrous amounts of money, contact Ross. The con itself was it's actually kind of a blur. Well... Yeah, I imagine it would be. Sorry for the... Uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, was it three days, four days? Well, it was five in total because it was a set-up day. set up and... Four okay. days of trading. Um, and I did four days' worth of demos, two sessions a day. Mind you, there were... People didn't show for some of those, so so then there were you know periods in the booth talking to people and taking them through games and talking about games and stuff like that, and then there were periods wandering the the halls, but it all just sort of blends together. There's no sort of distinct standout stuff i suppose the round of applause every evening as they close the trading floor it's like everybody congratulating themselves that they survived another day or something along those lines time to go get drunk <laughs> time to go get drunk. Well, i don't know that necessarily everybody had waited for that true enough tap envy us llc says evening hello 
I assume then that they are <laughs> not in Australia. Doesn't really sound like it. No. Oh, and it's uh, 846. 846. I apologise if you can hear the dog whining. And the dishes clattering. There's another rifle I've missed the bottom of. Tap NV US LLC is from Texas. Oh. That's kind of like Australia, but Americanized. Right. What's it like in Texas at the moment? Is it hot? Like everywhere else? Like Indianapolis was hot. Actually, Oregon was hot. You don't sort of expect to go to the, the, the upper west coast to find it 38 degrees, 39 degrees. No, I, I didn't think that was actually possible. That, that was a shock. So, and Indianapolis wasn't that hot. It was probably only 32, 33, but the humidity was ghastly. Especially seeing as, you know, we were walking 2Ks to and from the the hotel to the convention center so that by the time you got to the convention center in the morning you were dripping well i was i don't know about todd apparently it's rather pleasant in texas at the moment there you go 27 degrees roughly roughly 26.6666666 etc <laughs> Those are nice temperatures. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind some of that right about now. A little bit of motorcycling in there. Why? What temperature is it in Queensland? Well, in Brisbane this morning. The weather finger says it's 15. Right. Max of 24. Right. Spring has sprung, I reckon, but... Yeah. I'd still prefer it warmer. Yeah. <laughs> You want it up into the low 30s. Yeah, 31, 32, that'd be nice. Right. I'm quite content with 25, 26. All right. So we run our little experiment. Yeah, I think you're just on time for that. Right. So... We're going to do this one in two parts, and I'm, we're not going to go away from Discord. All I'm going to do is stop the recording. Hmm, 44 degrees. Yeah, that's hot. That's really hot.